Bruh. On January 31st, 2018, the Mario movie was announced, which Nintendo and Illumination worked together on. However, this was not the first Mario movie made. On May 28th, 1993, a live-action Mario movie was released and was the first video game film. However, this was a horrible film. It has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. So today, we'll be going into the behind-the-scenes of this film and see what went wrong with it. This film all began with a pitch from director Roland Joffe and producer Jake Eberts to Nintendo's president at the time, Hiroshi Yamauchi. However, at the meeting, they learned that they weren't the only people trying to get the rights to make a movie movie on Mario. Roland only had $500,000 to purchase the rights to make a film on this, so Roland decided to offer Nintendo all the merchandise profits, which is a really unheard move when trying to purchase rights to make a film. Not only this, Roland said that Nintendo could have more creative control of the film, and with all this, Nintendo agreed and Roland got the rights. Now, I do want to point one thing out while they were making the script. While making the script, Roland told Hiroshi Wayauchi, I'm sorry if I butchered that, that the script and storyboard he had won't be the story, but it'll be a story that contains some of these elements. I did find it interesting that Roland wrote the script like this. I mean, it did seem like he wasn't really sure about how he was going to write this movie, but that's just my opinion. Different writers submitted their scripts for this film, but they were rejected. According to the co-producer of this film, one of the scripts that was submitted was more of a serious drama piece as opposed to a fun comedy. Eventually, the producers of the film hired scriptwriters, which included Ed Sullivan, who worked on Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and Ryan Rowley. However, the studio still wasn't a fan of the script the two wrote. According to Rocky Morton, who was the director of the film, said, The reaction from the studios was that the script that was written was too dark and too adult, and it should be rewritten, or de-written, as I called it, to a lower level, adding stupid gags and making it more childlike, which is what happened. Now, at this point in time, everything about making this movie was chaotic like filming schedules, and there had already been a lot of scripts submitted, so they didn't have any time to do anything about it. But there was an issue that the new script caused. New script had a more childlike tone, and it didn't apply to the sets and characters, but Morton had to hold it in and continue on with production. Now obviously we need to cast because there wouldn't be a movie, obviously. Okay, I don't need to explain. Dustin Hoffman was one of the first people to be considered for the Mario movie, but according to the president of Nintendo of America, Minoru Arakawa said that Hoffman would not be right for the part. However, they offered big actors roles in this movie, like Danny DeVito and Tom Hanks. DeVito turned down the role, and Tom Hanks was offered $5 million and accepted the part, but the last minute the producers thought he couldn't handle a dramatic role. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger and Michael Keaton were considered for the part, but it ended up not working out. Eventually, a cast was set which was Bob Hoskins as Mario, John Leguizamo as Luigi, Dennis Hopper as King Koopa, and Samantha Mathis as Daisy, and there are more people, but I'm not going to say all of them because time's sake. Bob Hawkins said the reason he was picked was, I've got a mustache, I worked as a plumber's apprentice for about three weeks, and set the plumber's boots on fire with a blowtorch. What the hell? During filming, the chaos was followed with issues. The cast started using the name Rockabelle as a derogatory name for Morton and his wife Annabel Jenkel. They also constantly rewrote this film. They rewrote it so many times that the paper that they would rewrite it on is color-coded. It was reported that they rewrote this film five or six times. The writers weren't the only people changing the script. The cast would demand rewrites or go off script. Apparently the people who played Iggy and Spike wrote a rap scene for their characters, and it was filmed but was cut. Some sets were also not ready yet, but they had to shoot it and had to position Hopper, so when they filmed him, he wouldn't be offset. Morton and Jaquel would change their minds really often with ideas. Prop designer Simon Merton said that they have very, very fertile minds, but they're constantly changing them into newer, better ideas, so I rushed things into completion before they change again. Hopper said that filming was a nightmare and said it was a husband and wife directing team who were both control freaks and wouldn't talk before they made decisions. Bob Hoskins also said something similar to what Hopper said. It makes sense why this film had a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. Everything was rushed with this movie. And honestly, I don't think it should have even been released or just released it straight to DVD. I don't even care, but this film obviously was terrible. I watched it personally and I can confirm this movie was terrible. But anyway, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. And yeah, I'll see y'all later. Have a good one and goodbye.